Hi there, my name's John Harding. In this YouTube, we're going to work our way through uh, how to identify uh, stream benthic invertebrates and uh, to the order level. And we're going to focus really on the juveniles, on the larvae, on nymphs, as these are the life history stage that are used most commonly during biomonitoring programs and uh, assessment projects. There's really uh, a number of pretty good reasons why we use uh, benthic invertebrates. Uh, part of this is because they're great indicators of the level of uh, pollution or disturbance inside a, a stream or river system. Many species uh, have been identified. We know over 660 described species of benthic invertebrates. So we know quite a lot of them. Uh, we also know that they respond very differently to different types of pollutions. So our species, individual species, can be good indicators of different activities. The juveniles, the nymphs and larvae, can be found in streams and rivers all year round. So they're sort of long-term indicators of what's going on in the system. Well, to ID them, we're going to need a, a bunch of uh, equipment. And uh, shown here is just some of the uh, piece of equipment you need to, or probably will want to have to pick and sort through the samples and I've done a, a YouTube on that. Uh, you're also really, if you're going to want to identify animals to a low level, you're really going to need a microscope. So when we talk about uh, identifying these animals, we're using the Linnaean taxonomic classification. So this was developed by Linnaeus hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And so we talk about organisms being in kingdoms and phylums orders and then write down a family, genus and species. This YouTube is really about working out what order something belongs to to start off with. Then later on we can hopefully go down and identify them to genus and species etc. In streams and rivers there are about uh, seven or so orders that we typically find uh, dominating these systems. There are things like odonates, like dragonflies and damselflies, and hemiptera, so true bugs, water boatmen and back swimmers. They tend to be in lakes and standing water, what we call lentic systems. The other uh, animals that, or orders that I've identified here in yellow tend to be the ones that are more common in uh, streams and rivers. And those are the insects. There are also a number of other invertebrates that aren't insects. So there's crustacea, snails, worms, and those sort of things, so they're different groups. So what we're gonna do now is uh, work our way through uh, the sort of flow charts here, which hopefully will get us to the different types of orders relatively easily. The first one here, we ask the question is, does the organism we have in front of us have three segmented or jointed legs. Okay, so this is really important. The legs need to be segmented or jointed. If the answer to that is yes, then we're probably, well, we are talking about some sort of insect. The next question we might ask is, are there actually gills along the side of the abdomen? And again, if the answer is yes, then we go down to the third question here is, what's the tail look like, or what we call the circe? If it has three whip-like tails, then what you've got in front of you is almost certainly a mayfly, an ephemeroptera. Be aware that some of your specimens may be damaged, so you might have to look and say, well, I think it should have three tails. So the next uh, order that we might think about also depends on having three segmented legs. And then the next question is, does it have two whip-like tails? If it does, then you've got uh, probably a stonefly, a plecoptera, as seen here. Another different order, which also still has three pairs of legs, uh, toe biters, megaloptera, and the way in which they differ is they have these eight finger-like gills along the side of their abdomen. So superficially, if you're not looking under a microscope, you might think, oh, those are legs. They're not, they're actually gill. All right, well, what if we've got an animal that's got three pairs of legs, but it's got some sort of case, and this case may be made up of little pieces of stone, 
It could be a secreted uh, case uh, with a golden sort of colour or transparent. It could be made out of bits of wood or bits of leaves or a whole range of things. Anything like this with three pairs of legs in a case is again almost certainly a trichoptera, a caddisfly. Alright, so what happens if it's got three pairs of legs? Yes, it doesn't have uh, stones or wood, but it does have a soft looking fleshy body and claws or hooks right at the end of its body, two claws or hooks at its posterior end. In that case, it's another type of caddisfly, a free living caddisfly. Again, Trichoptera. And these can be really abundant in streams and rivers, and they're often predatory caddis flies that are this free living. You can see a very fleshy body. What about if it doesn't have three pairs of legs? What about if it's got more than three pairs of legs? So if you're seeing lots of legs, maybe 10 or more legs, or things that you think are legs, then you're almost certainly talking about some sort of crustacea, a shrimp, an amphipod, something like those. If it's got four pairs of legs, then it's an arthropod. Uh, sorry, they're all arthropods. Uh, these are all arthropods, but it's uh, probably an arachnid, uh, a spider or a mite, something like that. If it has a shell and doesn't have any legs present, then you're dealing with some sort of snail, some sort of mollusk. There is um, a type of crustacea that actually does have legs inside the shell. And these are tiny, these are ostracods, so they're very small, only usually only a millimetre or size. Carrying on with our, our three pairs of legs, if it has a hard body, some plates and an antennae, then it's probably a coleoptera, a beetle, although there is one beetle you can see there that has a sort of fleshy body. Again, if you're looking at something that doesn't have three pairs of legs and what I say with this is if, if you can tell that there's two distinct ends to it, there's a head and a tail, you may not be able to identify which is the head and which is the tail of this animal, but let's say it, they are different, uh, and it will often have what we call pseudo legs, little fleshy processes that are not jointed, then in that case you're probably dealing with a diptera, a true fly and there's lots and lots of diptera. One of the ones that's a little less common and found a bit more frequently I think in the South Island, particularly in the high country, is again this animal that's got three pairs of legs but it doesn't have um, a hard body, it's got a very soft body, but it has a plate directly behind its head in the thorax region. This little uh, animal is a mecoptera, a scorpion fly. And we only have one species here in New Zealand, and that's Nanocarista philpotii. So you might come across a Mycoptera, and again, three pairs of legs, but it's got this plate on its thorax directly behind its head. Lots of species don't have any legs at all. We've already talked about snails. There's also worms, flat worms. Uh, there's also, what I put here is a Kalimbala. And there's a thing called nematomorpha, which are, are Gordian worms. And some years ago I had someone ring me up and ask me, they, they said they had something that looked like a tiny little eel. And I thought immediately, well, this is probably a Gordian worm, uh, a nematomorpha that they're talking about. One of the other orders that's not really aquatic, it's found usually on the banks of streams and rivers, is one that uh, is often black in colour. It's got hard sclerotized body and it has this really distinctive needle shaped mouth parts. And this is a neuroptera. Uh, it's a lacewing. So that hopefully might help you get uh, to the order level. Once you want to identify the organisms below that, then you're going to need to, at this stage, to go to some more specific guides. And, the standard guide for insects is Winterbourne et al. Guide to Aquatic Insects. There's also another book by Chapman et al. which is a guide to freshwater crustacea of New Zealand. There are some other resources that you can find online on, on the web. 
Uh, so for example, EOS Ecology, um, a consulting firm in Christchurch has produced this lovely little easy schematic flow diagram, which is sort of similar to what I've done in this um, YouTube. And Niwa have a series of macro invertebrate guides that can help you get a little bit um, closer towards what a species is. I am going to produce later on some YouTubes to help you identify species. So uh, I hope that you've found this um, video useful and uh, informative. And uh, there's some references here that you might like to refer to that I've, I've shown in, in the YouTube.